Hi everybody, this is Cat Coloring, and this time I'm going to make a review of the Derwent Inktense. Now, the Derwent Inktense 72 set are watercolor pencils. And you may remember that a couple of days ago I made an unboxing and swatching of these color pencils. I have the swatch cards here. So you can clearly see what color the pencils give when you mix them with water. But I didn't feel confident enough to make a review of them the first time because I haven't worked with watercolors a lot. I work muse usually uh, with normal colored pencils and acrylic paint when I color and paint. So I thought that I had to... Um, work a little bit with these pencils in different uh, books, uh, in different kinds of uh, paper, and um, large areas, small areas, how much water, how little water can you work with before I can make a proper review of these. So, the first uh, book I'm going to work with is this book, Tales from the Forest Kingdom. And... Um, in this book, you can see here that the paper is somewhat thick. It's uh, thicker than this paper. This is just normal printing paper. And this paper is somewhat thicker. And it's not as white as this printing paper. It has a more yellowish tone. So I want to see what happens when you color with them in this book and how they are. This is colored with watercolors, uh, both the blue and the green, but this is colored with the Faber-Castell. And um, you can see the strokes here when I added the water. I also used here a um, Tumbo water brush to this. Instead, I'm not going to use that water brush. I'm going to use my normal brushes, the one I used for my acrylic paint, both the thick brushes, this, this is a, a number 8, and some thinner brushes, this is a number 1. For the details, I have a feeling that the result will be somewhat different when I use real brushes instead of these uh, water brushes. Um, so I will get back to you. Um, when I have tried it, I'm going to color some feathers from a crown on one of these women from uh, this book and also some background and then I will give my conclusion to it. So this was my first attempt with the Derwent Inktons. Um, I used the Sienna Gold and the Sicilian Gold and the Golden Yellow for the feathers in this crown and it went quite well. I think I added another layer of um, Sienna Gold here and here at the bottom because it was too bright when I had uh, used the water the first time and then I added water again and then it became darker so that's well that was really good the background was colored in a deep blue and it went well I used brushes not uh, water brushes but real brushes the uh, number eight round from Winsor and Newton and the number two from Winsor and Newton uh, this pencil and it went quite well I think but then I turned the page and I could see here that with some of the blue here and here it has simply gone through the paper and this is quite thick paper in Hannah Carlson's coloring books I must say um, so I don't know if I had too much water on the brush um, it, I'm, it must have been so it must have been me just uh, screwing up I think <laughs> um, it's uh, it's a pity because I had really looked forward to coloring this double page with the unicorns you can clearly see here and a bit there and there but um, so if you don't add too much uh, color I think things will go very well with these pencils. You have to be very careful 
how much water you add. So that was the first lesson. I can't wait for my next lesson. So the first try was the feathers and the background. And it bled a little bit through. But otherwise, I think that the coloring was great and the result was satisfactory. But I still had that bleed through. So I want to try them in a new on a new paper and it's going to be the paper from Johanna Bessford's World of Wonder coloring calendar from this year. And I have been so very, very busy that I haven't had time to color November. Whoops. Here. And uh, this page is the owl sitting on top of a house in, yeah, and it could be a moon, or perhaps it could be a sun. I have seen several drawings or colorings of this, and uh, I have mostly seen it colored as a moon and then with the night. Uh, but I think that the colors are very bright here, and so is the house. So I'm not quite sure that, that this should be a night scene. Perhaps it would be better if it was a day scene with uh, the sun and perhaps some clouds and so on. So, well, I will decide when I color it. So first I'm going to add some uh, colors. I'm not going to color everything with the watercolors. I'm going to color this moon or sun and then the background and the owl with the watercolors because there are some large areas here and I want to see what the colors look like when you color large areas like this sky behind the owl in the house uh, and then some smaller areas with details in the owl and with the feathers so i think that i'm not sure that i will color these uh, flowers with watercolor perhaps it will just be with normal color pencils and also the house well I will begin coloring and then I will do it with the water. Okay, the owl has been colored now and I use my color charts to decide the colors what they are going to be when I mix it with the water. So what it looks like now is not the way it's going to look like when I have finished with the water. So for the eyes around the pupil I have uh, chosen cadmium orange. And then I chose tangerine, which is a darker color when the water hits it anyway. Here for the, almost the rest of the iris. And then at the outer edge, a red color, hot red. So my goal with the eyes are that they are going to be very dark orange with a little bit of a lighter orange near the pupil. And then here at the edge, a little hint of red. Um, the beak is colored with two colors like the claws and I have used neutral gray for the middle and I have pressed just a little bit harder because when you look at the beak of an owl and the claws the middle of it the protruding point of the beak is somewhat darker and more shiny than the rest of it so I have chosen charcoal gray which is you can see it here when the water hits it that the neutral gray is darker and the charcoal gray a more muddy gray color so it's fine for the surrounding of the beak and the claws and then for the feathers I have worked with five different colors and I think I will have to remember exactly what color combinations I have chosen for the breast and the lower body uh, the feathers baked earth and Chinese ink uh, baked earth is this very nice reddish orange color uh, but there are also with a lot of owls some almost black or very very dark brown colors uh, in their feathers and I think that this Chinese ink you can turn on the light perhaps you can see the colors more clearly here you can see that it's not quite black it's more of a very dark gray and we can also see it, especially here, that the Chinese ink is not completely black as the ink black. 
So I think that these two colors are a great mix for the feathers here. And the rest of the feathers in the head and on the wings, I have worked with tan, which is a lighter color. I have worked with oak, which is a nice dark brown color. You can see them here, the oak and tan just above. And then I have chosen the sepia ink as the last color. And the sepia ink is a very dark brown color. So I have tried to mix it so it looks like the feathers of an owl. But I am very in doubt if I have done it correctly because I don't know how it will react when I mix it with water, when I put the water on. So here I try to mix the colors like I usually do when I color with color pencil. And then I remembered, well, perhaps they don't mix as well. So I decided to just add the lightest color and then go darker toward the edge of the, the feathers. So I am very, very excited about how the result is going to be. And now I am going to use the water and try it on. Well, I have my little glass jar of water and I have my pencils. Uh, for large areas, I have my number eight Winston and Newton round brush. I have a, um, and that's because I couldn't find other, my other pencils. So I have a number four round brush from Phoenix. I have a number three brush also from Phoenix. I have a number two watercolor brush and I also have a number one watercolor brush from Winter and Newton. So let's see. Mm, I think that I will start with a little area and I think that I will start with the beak. Well, it mixes well with the water. After my first try, I didn't expect anything else. Uh, I'm not sure that you can tell the difference between the two colors. Perhaps we should wait until it dries. So. I think I will go for the eye now. Oh, and you can see that also here the color dissolves quickly. And I have to be careful not to mix the colors too much because I wanted the inner circle to be lighter. And you can see here I already screwed up. It's a bit too dark. So with a light hand, very light hand, I will just continue and remember to just remove the excess water with a paper towel and then we have the red And see here when I mix the red and the tangerine or the hot red and the tangerine that it uh, mixes quite well. So the difference between this eye and this 
which is mixed with water, you can clearly see that the colors really are richly pigmented and really pops off the page. I think it is a, a, a balance between how much water you have in your pencil. Is it too much or too little? You can see here I had a little too much color, so the cadmium orange is a bit too bright or light. It gets more diluted. Then over here. So watercolor is certainly for very patient people. You have to use um, small brushes and be very careful when you add the water. But I think that it is really easy with just a normal brush. I could try to um, to use... Um, no, it's... Um, I think I will try to use this one. It's a bit broader. I'll just have to try it here. There's water in it. Um, but just try it here. See how that works compared to the brush. It's coming too much water out of the brush. It feels like I can't control the process with this one. I can try around the other eye with this brush. is a difference I think that just have to clean the brush that this one I did with the tumble roller brush and it feels like I just I'm just um, pushing the color pencil around and then when the brush stops, it just stays there, some of the color. It's like I'm pushing it around, it did, and it doesn't mix and blend very well with the water. But here I used the brush, the actual brush. And I think that it was much easier to, to blend the colors and um, on the paper. Well, I think that um, these water brushes was a mistake buying. I um, much prefer this brush. I think that I can control the, the process better. It feels like it. So I will continue using my brush. And here we have to be careful because I want this to be dark but if I keep doing this I think that I will push all of the dark color down to here 
so I will have to turn it the other way to make sure that some of the light color stays on these feathers. Yeah. And also here. More of the dark. Light color, not dark. And then towards the darker color. And then to prevent it from being too light, I just switch. Yeah. I think it looks okay. just have to be careful not to get all of this paint into the flowers. And you can see that I'm not used to it because I just made a mistake again. I should have continued doing this instead of this because I pushed some of the darker color down here so this area is too dark now and this is too bright but that's not uh, the fault of the color pencil that's just me <laughs> when you're not so practiced with these watercolor pencils Yeah, well, apart from this mistake, I think that it uh, looks kind of cool. Yeah. So, I also think that here I took the color one at a time. First, the lightest color, the tan, and then the oak, and then the sepia ink. And you can see clearly, except that I screwed up here, that it's light and then gets gradually darker. Here, I tried to do as I normally do and mix it together in it's a bit more muddy here with the coloring because the light and the dark are just mixed between one another. So when you color with watercolor, I think you really need to keep the colors apart. Light color, darker color, darkest color, or whatever you choose, blue, green, red, or whatever and not mix them so much together that like you would normally do because when the water hits it it um it changes what it looks like compared to uh, to this where it's more layered in light and darker and darkest yeah i'm going to color the rest of it now to music 
and speed the process up for you. Now that it's dry, I just want to comment a little bit about the result here with the owl. I think that the feathers work very good. You can still see that I added different colors. It's a bit difficult um, when you color to know just how much color you need to get on the paper. The dark spots, they could have been more clear. Um, but I think that it works. It's also not so clear to see this, but I tried to use different colors here and you can sort of see it, but again, the water dissolves. So with practice, I think that this could work very well. I'm also satisfied with um, the rest of the the feathers in, in the head here. Uh, wow. Well, except this one it was a bit muddy but this one turned out really nice but the chest i really didn't do it well uh, with the chest i um, think that the chinese ink i used was too much and too dark a color so i just want to do an experiment i want to um 
No, I just need to find the right color. Um, this one, it was the um, baked earth. I just want to see what happens if I add some more of the baked earth. I would really like to, um, and then use water again. I would really like this one to be more. I also think that this one was a bit off color. I want to see if this changes anything. So I think that I will use my a bit larger pencil for this. Um, just want to see if it helps to um, to add more oh perhaps i should have used a smaller pencil oh i think this will just about do it because i think that if i add more color and then mix it with water perhaps the result be something else too much water um Okay, so we will have to wait until this dries to see if it made a difference. <laughs> or if it's just really ruined this chest piece of the arm. While I wait for it to dry, I think that I will just uh, color and uh, do the moon or sun in the background and i have decided because i just i know that owls are night creatures and it should be a full moon but i also want to see what it looks like if it was a sun so i will color this half of the picture with a moon and a night sky and this part with a sun and a day sky a blue sky so um I want to use the sun yellow for the sun and for the moon I think it will be um, a tiny bit of the sun yellow I think the survey lemon is uh, it's got a weird color I don't think it's a very good yellow color to my purpose um, I think that I will use the sun yellow combined with white here um, and then I want to use a dark blue, not just black, because black is boring. I think that I would love to use a lagoon, the color lagoon for the night sky, uh, and uh, a more bright blue for the day sky, perhaps Irish blue, and just a light layer, so it's not too dark. So I have my uh, sun yellow here and I'm just going to here on the sun side add some yellow it's going to be a nice warm sun it's not completely dry yet And then this part, I just want to, um, ah. I just think it would look nicer with some yellow here instead of some gray or blue or violet. Of course, you can do it in the blue or violet tone if you wanted to and then i just need my blues um it was the i think it was the lagoon is this one 
and the bright blue is no it was the irish blue i not irish <laughs> iris <laughs> blue not the other one so the lagoon over here and it will have to be right about here the middle will be and I don't think that I want to color to the entire edge of the paper just somewhere around here now I have finished coloring I have put some white on top of the yellow and on the rest of this uh, half of the moon and um, then I have colored with the iris blue the day sky and then the lagoon with the night sky um, and I think I just want to uh, I think it's a bit difficult I haven't tried this on larger areas first so um, I think that I will begin with the moon and for the big parts I will use my bigger brush number the number eight and luckily this is some very thick paper so I don't think that I will have to worry about bleed through from the water So I have water on my brush, but not too much water. And these parts are so small, I um, won't use my big brush. I'm afraid that I will mix the coloring too much. So I will just take my little brush, my number four, brush and do these areas so I think that the color dissolves very nicely in these parts so I am going to do the moon this is almost dry And you can see that the yellow dissolves and is mixed with the white, which means that we have a paler yellow surrounding the yellow parts here where the white is. So it's not a completely white moon. So we have some light areas and some darker areas on the moon. You could of course have not put as much color here as I did, but I was actually more curious to see how it would blend and how it would react to the water than I was in making it look like a complete full moon. So this one is almost completely dry still a little bit moist and you can see that the dark color here i added too much water so it's still light but you can see here that coloring again with the baked earth has made the color darker here and here so it's not too it's dark still but it helped 
adding more colors. So I think that I will just add another layer of the ba baked earth because I don't want it to be so dark. It's not like this owl that is completely black in the front. I want it to be more of this brownish reddish color, a more light and bright color. So now that I have added this and I perhaps I could just let, let, let it be with this color. But I still want it to be mixed with the water just to see how it reacts. So let's try it again. And look at this. The pigment from the pencil is even more clear and dark. And the brown, brown reddish pigments lightens up the very dark color we had before. I think it's too difficult to see it's because my light is on, it's dark outside, but you can see it here that it really helps. So with these pencils, you can, when it's dry, add another layer of the pencils and then add water and another layer and add water and you can see that it gets really really filled with color and more bright than the first layer of the colors so you can experiment and in some parts of your drawing or coloring you can add even more layers of these pencils and just add the water, let it dissolve, let it dry, and then add. And then you can experiment with uh, different um, kinds of color thickness, you could call it, when you work with the Derwent Ink Tense. That's interesting. I didn't know you could do that, but I do now. So I think that um, this is enough color on the owl for now on this bit of the owl so I will just begin with the background and I think that I made a good choice with this iris not Irish <laughs> iris blue so you can see how easily it dissolves when I just let my brush just touch the surface and then see how it dissolves and mixes the pigments to this wonderful, wonderful blue color. And then we can take the smaller pencil for the smaller parts. Very beautiful. I'm just going to do the rest to, to music and speed it up so you can see the process.
so it's dry now and as you can see uh, I also added a bit more color here I thought it was too light so um, what can we see from this well the thicker the paper the more it will not bleed through and also um, the pigment in these pencils I think oh, is, is very very strong and when it's dry you can add more layers and then add water and let it dry before the next layer and I think that I managed to somehow make this not just a little bit light here and there and then almost black here I think that I managed to get it a more even brown tone it was not like I thought it would be but I managed to, to I think save some of this area which wasn't so good after the first uh, layer but then I changed it and uh, I think it's okay now it's not brilliant <laughs> at all but it's better than before because I added two more layers of this baked earth and it's more brownish now and not just light and black and light again it's also good to work with in these layers so you can add patterns and they will stay there uh, dependent on the water um, amount you use you can clearly see here that if you uh, add a lot of color you get a stronger color a lighter color when you just add a little layer of the color pencil I think that these uh, color pencils based on this attempt are very versatile I must say and I uh, like the way it dissolves quickly when you do background areas I think that backgrounds are very difficult to make both with just normal color pencils and also with these but I must say that these work uh, much much better for me than the uh, Faber-Castell I have been used to uh, working with I think it dissolves much more quickly um, and I like it a lot so I'm just going to um, try one more time in another book and paint some small areas and then uh, I'm ready to make my review conclusion this is a new book uh, I'm about to re release a flip through of this book on my channel I just want to um, test my color in this book and I'm just going to draw and see what the, how it reacts on this paper this is a very thin paper um, I have a real bad feeling that it will bleed through I think I'm just going to um, put some of my other paper in between so I won't ruin the entire book I really want to see and I don't have a lot of water on my pencil I'm just going to give it a very quick layer of water but not too much Oops. just to see how it works you can see that the paper already is getting crinkled here because of the water and I had a feeling but let's see when it's dry there was hardly any water on the pencil I had a feeling there were I wouldn't be able to use watercolors in this book so let's see when it gets dried still quite moist still a bit moist well it didn't get on this paper but you can clearly see that 
it's not quite dry yet but it's really soaked through this paper so when you use these derwent ink tins you have to use them in uh, on on uh, watercolor paper of course or uh, in coloring books with a thick paper and you still need to put paper behind it um to prevent it from well bleeding through with water and color as you can see here you can clearly see some of the red color here so no coloring with watercolors in this book to conclude these watercolor pencils from Derwent Inktons are very easy to work with I think they are easy to color with like normal color pencils you can layer them and you can uh, color them on top of each other and um, <coughs> they blend very nicely in small areas and you don't need a lot of water you need just the right amount and you will have to experiment with the right amount to dissolve it but I think that it dissolves very quickly uh, and it gives gives an, an a quite even spread on the paper you can also see here good for large areas too you have to be careful because the paint dries very quickly when I colored this uh, when I mixed the coloring with the water on this background you can clearly see that I had to use a small brush brush to get between the leaves and the flowers and then it was almost dry when I tried to mix it with the larger part of this so it's very quick to dry so you have to work fast you can't take breaks in the middle of mixing with the water uh, the good thing is that it dries quickly and then you can work in layers like I did here where I uh, at first added too much of the dark color and then I added not just two but three layers in total to with the baked earth to get a lighter color and a more brownish color instead of the black and just light reddish brown here you can also see that just one layer of the color like I did in the eyes of the owl uh, is enough uh, if you um, add what just one layer the color is very highly pigmented and it covers a lot just one layer also you can see here with the Sun and the moon that it has a great coverage and a very very great color one of the things that doesn't match uh, is as I said before when I unboxed and swatched the colors I think I want to take a what color did I use I think I used the was it the hot no, that was a puppy red the hot red I think was this one that was a chili red hot red this was it and you can see here that the color on the paint of the pencil and this one it doesn't really match and neither does this and several of the color pencil they don't match with the color you can see it here also with the iris blue it doesn't match it's not the same so um, you can't just rely on the paint of the color pencils and think that oh I have a lot of browns because a lot of the browns aren't really browns they are dark and some of them are gray um, so I think that um, as I said before they are very very good and easy to work with they are especially easy to work with when you use brushes to mix instead of water brushes uh, the difficulty with water brushes is that you just get a very small amount of water and if you want to color large areas at least then it's easier to use a big brush it can hold much more water as long as you remember not to put too much water on it but it, it, it's easier to work with with the normal brushes I think it also spreads very very good but it also depends on the quality and thickness of the paper you can see here that this owl it hasn't bled through to the other page 
and you can see here unfortunately it did and this paper is just a little bit thinner than this one and when i did it in this book now it's completely dry you can see that it clearly tries to break through the paper and it also crinkles the paper up the thinner the paper the more it crinkles when you um, ha use watercolors so you also have to use a a, a paper with a certain thickness either watercolor paper or some thicker paper and then you have to be very careful with the amount of water you use so Derwent Inktons is a good buy but they are also somewhat more expensive than other brands of color pencils so what should you do? I think that if you come across a very good deal with the Derwent Inktons, like I did with a 54% discount, you should buy them because they are so good to work with. They have so much pigment in the color. They are super easy to work with compared to other brands. And um, it's a real joy to get a lot of great colorful backgrounds but you don't just have to go buy them just to have them um, I think that you shouldn't pay the full price for them it's just too expensive uh, in a normal budget so this was my review of the Derwent Inktons I hope that it uh, helped you in getting to know these coloring water coloring pencils better I uh, hope that you will like and subscribe to my channel for more videos to come Happy coloring. Bye.